Hi, I'm Chris Dell with IntelligentBody.net, and we are here to release tension in the suboccipital muscles, which are the muscles at the back of the skull, the small muscles underneath the big muscles, and the jaw and tongue. The issue is that tension in these little muscles and tension in the jaw affects not just this area, but the whole body. Let's start with the suboccipital muscles. So to get to them, you're going to go to the bone that is right behind your ear, which is called the mastoid process. You're going to do it on both sides. So you're going to go like this. You're going to relax your tongue and your jaw and begin to massage on the bone and around the bone. Breathe. These little muscles tend to be places where tension just gets held. So softening it, for me, when I do it, gives a different sense of how my head moves and gives a different sense of my brain. And finally, I notice it gives a different sense in my whole body. From there, move around to the back. Just massage the space between the skull and the neck. And as you massage, when I do it, what I find is that it moves my skull because these little teeny muscles in here that they're called the suboccipitals means sub means under the this is the occiput the bone and this and this is obviously the spine and these little muscles attach from the skull to the spine these little muscles assist with head nodding be sure you keep letting your tongue and your jaw soften so when I massage in here, I tend by pressing, I'm moving the skull back and forth. This is Ed. This, my skeleton's name is Ed, and he, he uh, is not as stable as you are, luckily. Then go to this middle section. There's a divot. And the divot is there because if you go down the spine a little bit, there's these spinous processes. And the top vertebra, which is called the cervical number one, cervical spine, also called the atlas, because it's holding up the skull, like the mythical atlas that holds up the world, this is the atlas that's holding up our world, doesn't have a spinous process sticking out the back. So there's this space right there. So there's a, in there, in the space, which in the Franklin Method we call the back neck pit, but I like to also call it the space or the gap, because it is a space. And if we picture it as a space and we allow it to be free, we feel so much better. We feel so much lighter in our being. Because mostly we think that the skull attaches back here. But the weight of the skull is far more forward, supported closer to the front. It's actually supported up here by the mastoid processes. So back here is a free space. Then go just to the side of the back neck pit, of the space, and turn your head side to side. These little muscles are oblique angled muscles and they assist with rotation. When I do this release in the morning, like before I'm gonna do yoga and or exercise, this, is the, this muscle group makes me feel so light and agile in the rest of my body. It's like, it's like my whole being just goes, yay, and I feel good instead of having to work through tension to feel good. So we're doing rotation. Go back to the mastoid process one more time. Notice how you can push the mastoid process forward to nod the head back and push the mastoid process back to nod the head forward. I love that one. And let your arms hang down take them out, breathe, and feel the difference. See if there's a difference in how you feel when you nod your head and when you turn your head, and is it easier to have your jaw relax? You can stop here and just experiment with these suboccipitals, but we are gonna move forward into the jaw. So coming around to the front, bring your thumb underneath your chin. This one's harder to do when I talk and lead. Bring your fingers, your thumb underneath your chin and massage where your tongue attaches. Under there is the tongue attachment. Get that. Totally relax your tongue. Imagine your tongue 
to be like a Newfoundland dog. Ugh, totally let it go. Then massage along this jawbone on both sides and make your way to the back angle. And you'll start going up. You can, of course, spend longer. If you are a jaw clencher, I recommend doing this series at night before you go to bed, every night for three weeks. So you can begin to shift it in your nervous system and your body can learn that relaxation is the new normal versus holding being the new normal. And go to the space up behind the jaw that's right in front of the mastoid process, your, your new friend, the mastoid process, and massage in that space right behind the jaw. And let's go now right on top of the jaw. The jaw is called the temporomandibular joint because this bone is the mandible, this bone is the temporal bone, and the joint is the joint between them. So it's called the TMJ for short. The TMJ, which can get a bad reputation because there can be a lot of tension held there, but we can release that tension through touch and injury and movement. So I want to give you a sense of the jaw as you're massaging. There's three positions, like three gears for the jaw. The first position is closed all the way. Pull, pull your lower jaw up, and that's the first one. Second one is hanging, like second gear. Third one is all the way open. So you can feel the movement under your hand, right, of the mandible rolling in, in the joint of the temporal bone. So, as you go up and down, you can feel that movement. The most relaxed position for the jaw is number two. So, not up, not open, just hanging. There is the most relaxed position for the TMJ. From there, massage the bone, the muscles in front of the temporal mandibular joint. They, they're called the masseter. You can massage them down. And then go along the cheekbone. So go along the cheekbone all the way to the nose. And in behind there are what's called the maxillary sinuses. So if you ever get sinus infections or colds, which I hope you don't, but if you do, you can press in here and it helps open them up. All of this massage for the suboccipitals and the jaw assists with uh, respiratory function. And on your way back toward the jaw, there's a little arch called the zygomatic arch. See if you can press up into there and soften everything. Soften, soften, soften. Then let your arms hang down. And feel the difference in your jaw. Feel the difference in your neck and in your shoulders. Do a movement that you do, a down dog or a utkatasana squat or anything. Do a movement and feel the difference in your the way I use this in the class is I do this as a warm-up and then throughout the class I remind people, myself and the students, to, re to release tension in the jaw. And I ask you as a question, are you holding tension in your jaw right now? Are you helping the pose with your jaw? And people often laugh because it is a place where we commonly hold and we don't have to and it's a treat to learn another way. Thank you for being here with me. I look forward to doing something else with you again soon. Namaste.